प्लीज सब्सक्राइब एंड हिट द बेल आईकॉन टू नेवर मिस अ वीडियो फ्रॉम अक्यूर लाइफ साइंस फाउंडेशन माँ सेल्फ डॉक्टर शंतनु आर जोशी अ क्लिनिशियन अ फार्माकोलॉजिस्ट एंड अ ड्रग रिसर्चर डियर स्टूडेंट्स फ्रॉम टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द ई सी जीज एंड दिस इज द फर्स्ट ई सी जी ऑफ टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी टू नाउ आई एम गोइंग टू कॉमेंट ऑन दिस ई सी जी बट डियर स्टूडेंट बिफोर मेकिंग एनी मेजर कॉमेंट एवरी स्टूडेंट शुड नोट डैट एवरी टाइम वेन यू सी द ई सी जी द फर्स्ट एंड द इम्पॉर्टेंट थिंग दैट यू शुड सी इज द पी वेव इफ यू फाइंड द पी वेव एंड पी वेव सिम्स टू बी नॉर्मल then you should say that the heart is beating in sinus rhythm this is the first conclusion of this ecg that the heart is beating in sinus rhythm because p waves are normal now the second thing that you should see in the ecg is about the waves that is the large square between the two r waves all of you know this is one r wave this is again another r wave and you can see very easily that this is the one square this is second square and this is third square now there are three large square in between two r waves and that's why 300 divided by these three large squares will give you heart rate 300 divided by number of large square between the two r waves is equal to heart rate this is the second finding you may not call it tachycardia but it is about 100 and it is on the cut off value of that tachycardia but yes the heart is beating in sinus rhythm heart rate is 100 and the third and the important thing every student should note is that you should see the lead one lead one you should see the lead second lead third lead 1 is positive lead 2 is also positive lead 3 is predominantly positive when the lead 1 is positive 2 is positive and 3 is also predominantly positive the axis is a normal axis these are the three things that we have seen the patient the heart is beating in sinus rhythm second the heart rate is around 100 third axis is normal one more thing every student should know and that is related with avr this avr should always be negative if it is negative then you should say that all connections made by you in the limbs and the arm are correct there is no misplacement of the electrode if you are going to misplace the electrode that is right to left and left to right then this becomes positive this doesn't remain negative proper negative so this is one of the important test you should remember now in this particular ecg if you see this ecg starting from the lead 1 you will find that there is little st elevation here little st elevation here whenever you see this lead 1 you should always see avl because both of these are from the lateral side lateral side upper lateral side of the heart avl and lead 1 and in this avl also you are getting this st elevation now st is elevated in lead 1 avl one must see v4 v5 and v6 this is v5 and this is v6 but there is not much st elevation here or here it is not there at all in v6 it is not there in v5 you, you may say that it is there but if you see this lead you will say that it is not there and st elevation is seen only in lead 1 and avl now in lead v1 you can see the st elevation very clearly in v2 you can see it very clearly in v3 you can see it very clearly in v4 it is there but not so marked now my point is very important this is the lateral aspect of the heart lead 1 is seen from this direction avl is also seen from this direction that is the upper portion of the heart upper lateral portion of the heart is affected but not the lower lateral portion of the heart because lower lateral portion of the heart is represented by v5 and v6 and v5 and v6 are not affected now this st elevation is very important because my dear student st elevation is generally related with acute myocardial infarction 
Now, when your patient is presenting with severe chest pain, he is having nausea and vomiting, he is having vomiting actually, and he is having perspiration. Profuse sweating is the right word. If these three cardinal features are present and ECG is giving you such a picture, you should think about acute myocardial infarction. Now a point is very important. I told you that the upper and the lateral portion of the heart as well as the anterior portion of the heart, V1, V2, V3 and V4, those are also affected. And that's why this upper portion of the heart, anterior portion of the heart and upper lateral portion of the heart are affected. Now this only ST elevation is not important. It must be supported by some ST depression in the other leads. Now, in this ECG, if you want to say where is the ST depression, I would like to tell you that ST depression is seen in this lead 2, lead 3 and this AVF. This is AVF, this is lead 3 and this is 2. This is 2, this is 3 and this is AVF. Now a point is very important, this lead 2, lead 3 and lead AVF are the inferior leads. Now in the anterior leads and the upper lateral leads you are getting ST elevation and in the inferior leads you are getting ST depression. And this is how my dear student, this ST elevation is accompanied by this ST depression. And that's why this ECG is a confirmed ECG of acute myocardial infarction covering the anterior portion of the heart and upper lateral portion of the heart. This may be an evolving ECG, we don't know. If you repeat, if you repeat this ECG after 15 minutes, half an hour, you may get ST elevations in this V5 and V6 also and that will become anterior lateral infarction with reciprocal changes in the inferior legs. Now, the diagnosis is very clear from this ECG. It is the anterior and the upper lateral portion of the heart is affected. That is the acute myocardial infarction is present and it is supported by ST depression in the leads 2, 3 and AVA. Thank you, dear students. Dear students, thanks for watching. Please like, share and subscribe.